Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for today's discussion is still on shielding effectiveness, focusing on reflection. Okay, this will be the part C series or the last series discussion on reflection. Our topic for today's discussion is on part 25 series. The early on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. Please go through the video if you're keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, or if you have any suggest topic, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your effort. This is what we have discussed earlier on. We're going to focus on reflection loss under e field, okay, which means that the incident wave is predominated by electric field. Under e field, on the first boundary, okay, most of the electric field will be able to reflect back. Very little electric field will be able to penetrate through the first boundary. And because of this, we conclude that reflection is very effective for e view. Hence, for e view, even very thin material, they actually provide a very good reflection loss. This means that we don't even bother to consider the thickness of the shoe, okay? Because reflection is very effective for e view. Hence, we only consider the type of material. Okay, if the source is e field. Next, okay, let's focus on magnetic field. Okay, if you still recall, for magnetic field, okay, when the incident wave penetrates through the first boundary, okay, most of them will be able to penetrate through, and very little will be reflected back. And this results in a bigger problem for EMC. So when the incident wave successfully penetrates, through the first boundary. Okay, you can see that when they actually reach the second boundary, the characteristic change and most of them will be reflected back. And because of this characteristic, you can see that there will be multiple reflection. You can see over here at the other end on the second boundary, some of the magnetic field will be able to escape. And you can see that this is a cumulative effect. Okay, the summation of all the leak H view become a very critical issue. Hence, for shielding effectiveness on magnetic field, okay, reflection is not that effective. This is what we have concluded. Okay, reflection is not effective for H view. From magnetic field, okay, due to multiple reflection within the shield, okay, the shielding effectiveness is reduced. Okay, so let's take a look on this equation which we have derived earlier on. This is the electric field that successfully penetrate through the shoe. This is the incident wave. This is what we have calculated earlier on. Okay, this is the amount with respect to the incident wave that we can actually obtain how much magnitude of electric field that successfully penetrate through the shoe. If the shield is magnetic and the surrounding air is an insulator, since this is an insulator, we can conclude that the impedance is much, much bigger than the shield. Okay, so if this is a conductive material, you can also assume that the impedance will be very low because this is a conductive material, just like wire. Typically, they add the most one ohm or two ohm. This is very small as compared to the wave impedance. From here, we conclude that Z1 is many, many times bigger than Z2. And from here, okay, we can omit away this Z2. Since Z1 is many, many times bigger than Z2. And this is what we actually obtain here. Now the Z2, this is what we have on the outcome. And we see a common factor of Z1. So I cancel this Z1, cancel this. In result, this is what I actually obtained. Okay, so next, okay, I'm ready to replace so that it's much more relevant. 
In Z1, which is a wave impedance, so this W stands for wave. Z2, okay, which is a shield, so this S actually stands for shield. So I replace this ZW and Z2 on the equation here. So this is what I actually obtained. So this Z2 is equal to ZS, which is here. Z1 is equal to ZW, which is also shown here. So under reflection is actually the characteristics of E0 over E2. So when E0 over E2, I shift this E2 here, and this whole thing I shift to the left, which I obtain this. And under the reflection, I actually want to do a dB. So I have this form here. Next, under far field consideration, okay, this ZW okay, is equal to the characteristic impedance of free space, which is 377 ohm. And this is the ZS that I have shown it to you how to calculate the characteristic impedance of any material. This is the formula that we have derived earlier on. Under this equation, okay, if we put this ZW, okay, which is 377 here, and we put this 4 multiplied by this, and in the end, we can actually outcome in this equation here. This is the refraction loss under far field. Next. Okay, when it's a near field consideration, we have either predominant electric or magnetic field. And from here, you can see that this is the equation for electric field reflection loss. And this is the equation for magnetic field loss. Okay, so later on, I'm going to show you some example how we can compute the reflection loss. But from here, you can see that okay, this equation here is for far field. Okay, this equation here is for electric field, and this equation is for magnetic field. All this loss is on reflection only. Let me show you an example. What is the reflection loss of a 0 0.001 inch thick copper shield to a 1 kilohertz electric field? Okay, if the thickness is increased to 0 0.01 inch, okay, again, what is the reflection loss? For this case here, okay, I assume it's a far field. So I actually obtained this equation to compute the refraction loss under far field. Okay, so for copper, this mu r, conductivity r is equal to 1. And we have the frequency of 1 kilohertz. So what I need to do is I substitute this as 1 as shown over here. This mu r is also 1. Frequency is 10, uh, 1 kilohertz. So from here, I compute that the refraction loss is 138. Db. So remember the question also asked that when the thickness actually increased to 0 0.01 inch, again, what is the refraction loss? From here, you see that the shoe thickness T has no effect on refraction loss. If you take a look on this equation, there is no thickness at all. So even the thickness actually increased, okay, the refraction loss is still at 138 dB. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.